Jesus is good, Master God. Oh Lord, our God, let's forget about. We long to see you this morning. We long to see you exalted, high, and lifted up. We long to see you magnified for who you are. We long to see the greatness of our Lord in the days of the living. Oh Lord, where else can we go? To whom else can we run to besides you, our King? You are the only God who is worthy of our time, our effort, our hearts, our soul, our everything. Lord, we come to you this morning in total surrender. And we say, God, have your way amongst us this morning. Have your way in everything that we do. Lord, there is no one else beside you. We have said it, Lord. And we will sing it. We will say it. And we will live it. In Jesus' name, amen. Because the enemy has been defeated and death couldn't hold you down. We're going to lift our voice in victory. We're going to make our praises loud. Because the enemy has been defeated death couldn't hold you down we're gonna lift our voice in victory we're gonna make our praises let's shout it because the enemy has been defeated and death couldn't hold you down we're gonna lift our voice in victory we're gonna make our praises loud because the enemy has been defeated and death couldn't hold you Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout unto God with the voice of praise. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout unto God with the voice of praise. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Shout out to God with the voice of praise. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. We lift your name up. And when peace like a river attended my way. When so Whatever my 
Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working.
this morning can say it is well with my soul no matter what we have gone through and no matter what's to come can we truly say to God it is well with my soul no matter what will come that I don't understand though it is difficult are we going to say when we are lying in bed, it is well with my soul? I'm reminded of Habakkuk when he had argued with God and he had brought his case before God. And he had listened and God would say to him many things. But this is what he says. It says, even though the fig trees have no blossoms and there are no grapes in the vine even though the olive crop fails and the fields lie empty and barren even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty yet I will rejoice in the Lord I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. And I remind it even of Job when he was going through that difficult time and he was listening to his friends and we're saying all those things that he disagreed with. He would say, even though he slays me, yet I will praise him. How many of us can truly go before God and say, even though difficulty will come my way, yet I will praise you. God is wanting us to go to a place of surrender where we stop trying and we give everything to him. If you have been trying, God is saying stop. If you have been trying, God is saying stop. The final word I have is the testimony of Joseph. He would give his two sons the names Manasseh and Ephraim. Manasseh, what does it mean? It says God has made me able to forget my sorrows. And he would give the name Ephraim, meaning God has made me fruitful. What's the common thread in those two names? God has made me able to forget my sorrows, but he has made me fruitful. It's not about us. 
it is about God. It's not about our trying. It is God doing it for us. So just briefly, we will sing, It is well. Just briefly. And I would want you to go before God and say, Help me stop trying. And help me sing with my heart, It is well. say today it is well it is well within us it is well with our souls we rest in your God we lay down everything and we rest in you in Jesus name let's give God a praise offering this morning Let's take our seats. Good to see everyone today. We had a bit, not of a, a rocky start, an exciting start, I would say, because we are learning and we are... <laughs> I won't be able to repeat that. We are learning as we go. I think... Credit to Les and his team. They are trying so hard. It's, it's not easy, but I know we'll get it right. So the news is we, are now, we have now gone live. So I don't know, Paul, if you are able to show it for us so that people can see why I was repeating myself. Maybe it will come up and we will be able to see it. So it's trying to cater for everyone. We're struggling with the 50. The number 50, we feel it's too small. And hopefully we can be able to move to 100 or we can be able to go even to the full service. That is if we choose to be vaccinated. It's a personal choice, I have to say, but I can say to you guys, I'm fully vaccinated. I received my first and second shots so I'm not even scared. So that's me right there, <laughs> live. Hopefully I won't hear my voice again. <laughs> Do we have 
visitors, those who are joining us for the first time, you've never been to the base before, please show us by raising your hand. Special welcome to you guys. It's good to have you. Always a good house should be able to welcome visitors, and we're happy that you have chosen to visit us today. If you can come and talk to us after the service, we just want to know you, so we'll be right here in front, that side, that corner, I'm being told, yeah. So, yeah, and the visitors' packs are on the chairs there, so please come and see us in that corner. It would be good to spend a bit of time with you. Our tithes and offerings, uh, Paul, you can take me off live now. <laughs> and can we put our banking details on the screen again the the machine uh, the swiping machine is in the corner then there is a black box right there if you want to put cash it's always good to give to the house of God so I would want to encourage us to continue to give faithfully uh, to the house of the Lord so that we can be able to pay our zesa and be able to do all the other things that we have to do. Um, Wadzi has a special announcement for us. Can I ask you to come? Maybe you can pull a wipe from there. Wipe that down, that one. Morning, church. Um, we had a um, fireproof event that we, a marriage explosion event we had two weeks ago. Um, we watched a movie called Fireproof, and um, we had a lot of sniffling and snobbing <laughs> as we watched the movie. It was quite powerful. And lo some people left before the movie was. When it was finished, I guess they were too shy for us to see their red eyes. So we made some cards. It's a 40-day challenge. Some people didn't manage to get it after the movie. They were rushing out. So um, to my left, at the corner there where the swipe machine is, you are free to grab some cards, the 40-day challenge. I mean, you can just keep it. You can always do it whenever, even when your spouse doesn't know you're doing it. So just, it's just nice to have. Cool. Thanks, Wazi. So we still have virtual connect groups. So I know we are not able to meet in person all the time. So those are still vital, and we would want to encourage you to join uh, our virtual uh, groups so that we can stay connected. Please, please, if you are not part of any, the details are there. And if you want to ask any more questions, please contact the church office. Uh, Sherry and Angie, I'm sure they're happy to help. The Wednesday prayer meeting is still happening at half six. Uh, we, our numbers are increasing, that's what I can say, and hopefully we can be able to get to 50 and start registrations. Isn't that nice? That will be good. So please, if you can join us for Wednesday prayer, that will be fantastic. And last week we had our special service, so we can say this is the first Sunday officially where Ed and Hyde are leading uh, this team and being part of the family. So hopefully we can be excited about the season which God has in store for us. In the end, we honor their commitment uh, to the cause of the kingdom of God, but mostly all the honor and glory belongs to God because we gather in his name. So it's never about any man, but it is about God. So, Ed, special welcome as you share the word with us today. <laughs> Take that wipe. <laughs> and wipe down this one. Can we pray before he, he starts sharing the word with us? Lord Father, thank you so much for this opportunity. We thank you for wor the word that you have put on Ed's heart for us this morning. 
we pray that our hearts can be open and we can receive and hear what you have for us. Lord, use him as you may. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, thank you. How many of you have been married for close to 40 years? How many of you know that it's not a 40-day challenge? <laughs> they need to read you. They think and call it the 40-year challenge. <laughs> uh, for my wife, I'm talking about. I, I, it's easy for me because she's easy, easy to be married to. Please tell her I said that. Eh? Okay. But for her, it's a 40-year challenge. Um, hopefully, we make like 60, in which case it'll be the 60-year challenge. Yeah. Really is lovely to see you all this morning. It's lovely to be here. And... Um, Heidi and I adopted a daughter in um, 2000 and something, I can't remember now. But we adopted a young girl, she was 14. And at her 21st, seven years later, I remember really working through this question of why we did it. See, when we, when we first chose to adopt, it was, um, well, we felt the conviction, we felt that it was from God to do that, and, and there was loads of support, and if I may say so, there were a load of guys that came to us, and, and guys gave, um, I remember somebody redid her bedroom, put a new duvet, and all that sort of stuff in it, and um, not just a duvet, but like all that stuff that ladies would really be familiar with, but to me they just did a room. And, um, and then, and, and guys even gave. Somebody paid for her education for, till the end of school. And so there was a lot of support and, and there was a lot of affirmation to Hards and I. Well done, this is a courageous thing you're doing and all that sort of stuff. But how many of you know that the honeymoon of those kind of moments ends pretty quick? And I remember... When I were, when, at her 21st, just thinking through, because this 21st was quite a difficult time for us. And um, remember asking this question, why did we do this? And we certainly didn't do it to be affirmed. Because if we did, that thing ran out very quickly. And we didn't do it for somebody to say thank you, and may I say not even for her to say thank you. Because if you do that kind of thing to get a thank you, never going to happen. We didn't even do it because we loved her. Because there were times, honestly, when I wasn't so sure I did. It, it boiled down to this, that, that the reason we did it was because her life was worth it. That's what it came down to. There were times that it just had to look at her and say, what, whatever it's Whatever the cost, whatever the difficulty, whatever the discomfort, her life is worth this. And I had to settle on that thing. Now, we've been to Zoom many, many times. We've been in this church many, many times, and we really love this church. And I um, know a lot of you, don't know all of you, but I know a lot of you, and we really love Alan and Debs, hugely, and your family. I could say that for a lot of you, but if I but this week, um, so we've known for a couple of months that we would be here. But this week, both for Hards and I came down to this thing why are we here, both of us. And there are a load of reasons as to why we should be. But it, it, it distilled, I, I, friends, I, I have loved the church for decades. You know, some guys moan about the church and the church this and the church that and the church hurt me. I, I've never experienced that. I've, I've hurt the church. I really have hurt the church. But my, my honest view of the church is it's the most beautiful thing. Jesus is building it. And, and some, I see some people get quite cynical with the church the older they get. And a person asked me a while back, how come you never get cynical with the church? And, and this was my spontaneous reply. I hadn't thought about it. I said this to them, I have a very high expectation of the head and a very low expectation of the body. 
Seriously. And that, when I said it, I didn't think it through, but it made such sense to me. Because we're human, guys. And we fail the whole time. But He never ever fails. And so our expectation of Him should be huge. And our expectation of each other, very tolerant and very gracious. Very honoring and full of respect. And so I, I honestly can say that I love the church. I love the church worldwide. I love whether it's an Anglican format or a charismatic format. I actually don't give too much. I just love this thing that he is building. But Hards and I realized this week that that's not enough. It's just not enough. And, and in the quiet moments this week, asking this question, Lord, why are we here? It comes down to one thing. It's because he's worth it. And so for Hards and I, and forgive me for being personal, I'm not trying to put myself on center stage here at all, but, but the reason we are here is it's an act of worship. It's really nice to be here, seriously, it's a beautiful country and your motorbike track that I went to look at this week is insane, that would be enough to get me here, just, just that, but no, it actually wouldn't be enough, just for a weekend it would be enough. But what I'm saying, friends, it, came, it boiled down to this thing, what am I doing here, Lord? It's an act of worship because you're worthy. And, and friends, that thing is to get on the inside of us. Why are we doing what we're doing? Why are you serving where you're serving? Why are we giving financially in an economic meltdown? Why are we attending service on a Sunday morning when there's a lot of other things that we could do? Why are you here when you could be on the motocross track? Why are you here where you could be on Kariba? There, there is so much of our, of our Christianity which is really quite uncomfortable and imposing. And there are always other things to do. And say, Why am I doing this? Why do you guys drive down from halfway to Kariba? Because he's worthy. He's just worthy. And everything we do, friends, is an act of worship. And Father, I ask this morning that as we ponder your word. As we listen to your word, Father, I'm asking that, that, Father, there would be a work of your spirit that draws back the curtains, that we would see you clearly, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, every single person that is either listening here live or watching it or when they watch it, Father, please, I ask in the name of Jesus for such a massive, compelling, transforming, invasive revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, of the reality of you, Heavenly Father, through a work of your Spirit. I pray, Father, that if there is anything that blocks this morning, a uncomplicated, life-changing revelation of you, Father, I ask that you dislodge it this morning. In Jesus' name. Your word says, Father, of your word, that your word is like a hammer that breaks the rocks in pieces. And Father, if there be any rock in any heart, in any mind this morning, I ask you to powerfully, Father, through your spirit, just bash it into pieces. Bash it into pieces, Lord. That we would see you and sense you and hear you and know you, Father. We used to sing a song back in the day, you'll remember it. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Just sing with me. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light. Of his glory and grace. Just sing it one more time. We turn our eyes upon Jesus and look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth 
will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. The first line of that song comes out of Scripture. It comes out of Hebrews chapter 2, I think it is, and again in Hebrews chapter 12. And in the Hebrews, I can't remember if it's Hebrews chapter 2 or chapter 3, it says, um, Now, brothers, you who share in the heavenly calling, fix your eyes on Jesus the apostle and high priest of our confession or our calling. And then in Hebrews chapter 12, again it says, uh, it, it doesn't use the word fix, it uses the word consider Jesus, who endured such hostility from sinners that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. Okay? Consider Jesus. Now friends, that's, that word consider, that fix your thoughts, it's, it's got to do with your brain. It's got to do with your head. It's got to do with your thinking. Do you know that you can speak to your brain? You know that? You know that you can, I don't know which part of you speaks to your brain. I don't know how that works. There's a part of you that can speak to your brain. And, and Psalm 103, 4 or 5, I can't remember, says this. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Who's doing the speaking? To which part of you? Your soul. Which part of you is doing the speaking? I don't know. But there's a part of you that can speak to your soul and tell it what to do. And so like your soul doesn't want to bless God. And your soul wants to be somewhere else. And your soul wants to do something else. And your soul wants to think about something else. And your soul wants to fulfill something else. You can grab your soul. I don't know which part of you. But there is a part of you that can grab your soul by the scruff of its neck and say, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And friends, we've got to take a hold of our soul sometimes and tell them what to do. You take a hold of your soul and you say, Soul, thoughts, fix yourself on Jesus. But I don't feel like it. I don't understand. It. Soul, stop arguing with me. Fix your thoughts on Jesus. That song, dear friends, is not a cop-out. It's not some mantra for an easy way through. It's not some mantra to a detour. This is just nice. I'm going through a really, really tough time. Let me just be like an ostrich, bury my head in the sand, and sing, turn your eyes on Jesus. That's not what it's saying. Some, sometimes we sing it like that. Like there's not, just turn your eyes. No, you're not a Hindu, friends. But we speak to our souls. You know, sometimes we don't turn our, our heads on Jesus because it says, fix your thoughts on Jesus. Sometimes we don't fix our thoughts on Jesus because there is so much of Him we don't understand. And there are so many questions we, have ans we don't have answers to. Well, that's the very reason we fix our thoughts on Him. Because we don't have the answers, but we know who does. And imagine... If you could answer all the questions. Imagine if you had all the answers to that stuff. Where's the mystery of our faith? And friends, questions will do one of two things. They'll either drive you to God or away from Him. You speak to your soul and make that choice. Do you reckon the thief on the cross, as he hung there, he had, he had never, his only it would seem his only exposure to Jesus had been to this broken, bloodied body that never preached a sermon or never performed a miracle. He didn't have that history of Jesus. All he, had, all he looked at was this broken, bloody body of a so-called criminal. That's all he had. Do you reckon he had questions? But he still was able to put his faith in him. Just in that moment. He didn't get to say the sinner's prayer, didn't get to go to Bible college, didn't get to put anything right, didn't get to go home and say sorry to his wife if he was married, or reconcile with his kids if he was in a bad relationship, didn't get any of that. That wasn't the issue. The issue was who Jesus is, and all he got to say was, remember me, and he's in heaven. He has an eternal relationship with God, because he looked at him. We base far too much of our commitment and our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ on what our soul works out. 
It's time to say to your soul, bless the Lord. Because he's worthy. Do you know what today is on the religious calendar? It's Palm Sunday. I forgot that. And last night I was at Daryl and Alana's house, and I was supposed to not have supper because I'd had so much lunch and I've stuck on weight, but the kids made these unbelievable pizzas. And at first I was strong and I said, no, thank you, and then I saw them. Mm, and they burnt the one just a little bit, so it was like crispy cheese. You know that? You know crispy cheese pizza? You just can't say no. So I said, after I'd said no thanks, I said, do you mind if I change my mind? I'll just have a little bit. While I was sitting there eating my piece of pizza, I looked on their door frame to their kitchen, and I saw four, you know, those, you know those palm crosses that you get in some churches? I saw four on the one side of the door frame and four on the other side. And I remembered what today is. It's Palm Sunday. It took me back to when I got home last night, took me back to when I was a little kid, and, and Lent meant so much to me when I was a little guy. In fact, it meant a lot to me even when I didn't know what it meant. Seriously. There was something about, and I remember as a little kid, Ash Wednesday. How many of you remember Ash Wednesday? Okay, and, and like I didn't bath. I didn't enjoy bathing anyway, but, but then I really didn't want to bath. I wanted that little ash crucifix on the top of my head because I knew there was something sacred. I knew there was something significant. I knew there was something beautiful about this cross that was stuck on my head in ashes. I wouldn't bath. Like I felt really holy. I felt like I was St. Edwin because I had this ash cross on my head. And then I remember as a kid, Palm Sunday, and we'd get given this little palm cross, and I would hang on to that thing for a year till next, and then we would burn them. And this, and friends, the, the simplicity of our faith. Do you know where Palm Sunday comes from in the Old Testament? It comes from Zechariah chapter 9. And the prophetic word that came 500 years before Jesus. And Zechariah chapter 9 said, Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king comes. Righteous and victorious. Humble and riding on a donkey. Behold, your king comes. Righteous and victorious, humble and riding on a donkey. I don't know if you get the two different pictures there. The one is of, of Jesus who is, and it's full of majesty and victory. And the other picture is of a king on a donkey. It was a very humble picture. Now if you go back to way back in the Old Testament, kings rode on donkeys. But at the time of Jesus... Kings didn't ride on donkeys. At the time of Jesus, a king would ride on this big white or black stallion. How many of you watched the movie Gladiator? If you haven't watched it, watch it. It's really good. You know when old Maximus rides up and down in front of his armies? What's he riding on? Come on, guys. You've seen it. What was he on? What color was it? Big. I can't remember what color it was, but it was a color. He's riding on this big horse. Can you imagine what he would have stood up trotting along on a donkey in front of the crowds, waving his sword? Uh, Maximus the Great on his little donkey trotting along there. No, he's not on a donkey, friends. Because it just wouldn't work. Maximus the Great on his donkey. Just wouldn't work. But the picture of Jesus, of him who is worthy, comes on a donkey. Because his kingdom is so very, very, very different to the kingdom of the world. We've just watched the series Crown. I don't know if any of you guys have watched that. It's a really great movie. There's just one episode you need to not watch. Completely pornographic. But you can see when it's coming, so just switch it off, skip the whole thing and go to the next one. Don't watch it. It's bad, that particular episode. You won't have any doubt as to which episode I'm talking about. But when you, when you watch royalty, it doesn't matter, we've just, uh, the, the Zulu king has just died. Broke all the COVID laws to bury him. Okay? The, what royalty does and what thrones do is they separate subject from monarch. 
That's what a throne is designed to do. A throne is big. A throne is imposing. A throne is high. You walk up to it. You never walk down to a throne. You walk up to a throne. Well, you don't even approach it. But that's what, a, that's what a throne does. It separates you and lets you know that you are the subject and you are nothing. And everything is about the monarch. But Hebrews chapter 4 tells us this. We do not have a high priest who is incapable of sharing our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every way as we are. And that gives some of you guys a bit of hope. Eh? Tempted in every way as we are, yet was without sin. Let us, therefore, approach the throne of grace with confidence. Every other throne is designed to fill you with lack of confidence. Every other throne is designed to fill you with intimidation and, and hesitation. But His throne is the throne of grace, and it's designed to draw you to Himself. So you have this picture of Palm Sunday, of Him who is righteous, and victorious, him who is both the lion and the lamb, coming on this donkey. Let me read you some of the names that Jesus has given in the book of Revelation. These are the names. Jesus is called the faithful witness, the alpha and omega, the amen, the ruler of God's creation, the lion of the tribe of Judah, king of the nations, faithful and true, the word of God, the King of kings and Lord of lords, and the bright morning star. He's given all those titles, but only once each. What do you think his eternal name is in heaven? The Lamb. He's referred to as the Lamb 30 times in the book of Revelation. 30 times. All these other pictures, including the Lion of the tribe of Judah, only once. That's not to say that he isn't those things. But he is worshipped and revered and honored in heaven, according to the book of Revelation, is the eternal Lamb of God. That's our King. Very different, isn't it? The Lion of the tribe of Judah and the Lamb of God. Psalm 62 says this, once God has spoken, twice I've heard. In other words, God just has to speak it once and it echoes in our minds forever. I think that's what the meaning is. Once God has spoken, twice I have heard that power belongs to God and to you, O Lord, in the first person, belongs steadfast love. Once God has spoken, twice I've heard this. That power belongs to God, the line of the tribe of Judah. And that you, O oh Lord, are loving or full of steadfast love, the Lamb. That, that word that is used there of love is the Hebrew word chesed. I'm, I'm sure I haven't got the pronunciation right. It's the Hebrew word C-H-E-C-E-D. And we translate it as love. It's a much bigger word. It, it, it means both tender and kind and yet strong and robust and committed and covenantal at the same time. All that three groups of adjectives. So it's tender, it's kind, it has soft eyes, a listening ear. Yet it's strong and robust and jealous and will not tolerate and at the same time, it's, it's covenantal and committed and never runs out. That's the word that's used there. It's the same word that is used in Exodus 34, verse 6. The first time God describes himself in the Bible, where he says, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in love and faithfulness. The same Hebrew word, chesed. He abounds in this, in this gentle, tender, forgiving soft-eyed kindness, yet committed and covenantal will never, never, never let you go even when you want them to, and strong and robust and warrior-like all at the same time. That's who we serve, friends. And so, 
Palm Sunday. Do you remember when John the Baptist, before Jesus began his ministry, and John the Baptist is baptizing guys and he's confronting politicians and he's this, you know, that says he, he dressed in a, a, a robe of camel hair. And we know we read that quickly. Have any of you ever slept on a horrible carpet? Have any of you ever like put on a jersey that was properly uncomfortable? Well, this guy's robe was made of camel hair. Camel hair, friends, I've never, I've touched it, it's not like lamb's wool. That's all I'm saying, Okay. So he's dressed in this, this robe of camel hair, and he eats grasshoppers and honey. That's his diet. Banting friendly. Super banting friendly. Okay? Or keto. I don't know what it is, but you're not going to put on weight with that diet. That's all I can say. You have to eat a heck of a lot of grasshoppers to get fat. And anyway, that's, he's a rough guy. Rough and tough guy. Dressing politicians. Confronting Pharisees. And then he sees Jesus one day. He says to his disciples, Behold, Look, consider, fix your thoughts on, turn your eyes towards, behold the Lamb of God. I have a word for you this morning. Seriously, friends. I wish I could get inside every one of your souls. It would be, behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Why are you here? Because I behold the Lamb of God. Why are you doing what you're doing? Because I behold the Lamb of God. Why are you giving? Because I behold the Lamb of God. Why are you serving? Because I behold the Lamb of God. How can you continue? Because I behold the Lamb of God. How will you live? What decisions will you make? I will behold the Lamb of God. Do I understand everything about the Lamb of God? Are there loads of questions about the Lamb of God? Yeah. But I behold Him. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 18, and we with unveiled faces beholding the glory of God, or being transformed into His likeness from one degree of glory to another. Friends, have you stopped being transformed? I ask you this seriously. Have you stopped being transformed? It's because you're not beholding the Lamb of God. And we become very, very religious. And we can go through all the motions. There's no God and there's no life because we're not beholding the Lamb of God. Can we stand, please? My wife always says to me, Ed, when you preach, you look like you're cross. I'm really not cross, I just get desperate. Tanesh, can you come and play for us, please? Can we have the whole band up, please? We sang this morning, uh, It is well with my soul. And funny, every week I do a little worship recording for, that I put out, um, very simple worship recording. And this week the song I had chosen, but I couldn't find it, was It is well with my soul. I just couldn't remember all the words. Friends, why can we say, It is well with my soul? Because we behold the Lamb. Can you imagine when Jesus rode into Jerusalem, this day that we celebrate today on Palm Sunday? He comes trotting in on a donkey. In fact, it was a, it was a baby donkey. And the people put their cloaks on it, and then they cut down branches of trees, and they laid the trees so that the donkey would walk over them. It was a, it was an an act of, of reverence. It was a symbol of victory. A king is coming. And friends, the, the point is, is, is this a Palm Sunday for you? Seriously, friends, is this a Palm Sunday for you? Has the king of kings... The, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the Lamb of God, is He walking the streets of your life? Is He walking the street of your life? And if He's not, dear friends, 
But if there's no reality to that, you'll know it. You'll know it. And maybe God brought you here today so that you could behold Him. You could behold the Lamb of God. Not with a commitment that is 55 years old and has no more relevance to it. But you could behold Him today. And behold Him today. Spirit now and bring each of us to a revelation of the Father and of the Son. I can't do it, Lord. We can't do it. The best preacher in the world can't do justice to who you are. The best teacher in the world cannot explain you. The most charismatic preacher in the world might, might catch our attention, Lord, but can't save us. But Father, if you will move now by your Holy Spirit and take every single person here deeper, Draw every single person here closer. So I ask you to please keep your eyes closed. Seriously, just keep your eyes closed. If you're here this morning and your relationship with God is not right, you'll know it. It doesn't matter whether you, I'm not, I don't mind whether you're saved or unsaved, but if you know that you are not beholding Him and there is something inside you today that says, I want to behold him. I want to follow him. I want him to be my Lord. And by the best of your ability, you will open your heart today and invite him to live inside you and to reign inside you. Can I ask you please to raise your hands? I'm not going to ask you to come to the front. I'm just going to lead you in a prayer where you are. Can you raise your hands if that's you? doubted Jesus after Jesus had ridden from the dead Jesus confronted him quite frankly and yet quite graciously he said to him Thomas you can put your hand on my side you can put your finger in the nail wounds and Thomas's reply was just very very simple but very worshipful he said my Lord and my God my Lord and my God. Would you understand this morning? My Lord and my God. Father, you see those who have raised their hands here this morning. And I ask you, Father, please to come in the power of your Holy Spirit to experience you, to know you, to see you. I pray, Father, that they will walk from this moment Talent spoke this morning of trying I pray that they will walk this morning from today not in their own effort of trying to follow and trying to please but in the power of your Holy Spirit, Father in Jesus' name in Jesus' name say to Jesus this morning, my Lord and my God, out loud, tell him what he means. 
means to you right now out loud. Make a confession. Make a confession to him now. Out loud. Of who he is to you. Of what he means to you. Of your desire to follow him. Perhaps even your inability to follow him. My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. We follow you, Jesus. Behold you, the Lamb of God. Behold you, the Lamb of God. Worship you, for you are worthy. Worship you, Lord God, for you are worthy. Worship you, Lord God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are worthy. You are worthy. Dear friends, live in the place of worship. Live in the place of beholding Him. Look in his face now. Just look in your face, Jesus. Friends, sing this as a declaration. Don't sing this as a devotional. Sing this as a declaration. In the light of your glory and grace, God. We sing now, Lord, I turn my eyes on Jesus. We turn our eyes on you, Lord Jesus Christ. We look full, Jesus, in your wonderful, wonderful faith. We look at you, God. We behold you this morning. We behold you, God. And the things of the earth will grow strangely dim. Your glory and your grace, God. Let's just sing it one more time as a declaration. We turn our eyes on you, Lord Jesus. We turn our eyes on you, Jesus. Turn God our eyes on you, Jesus. Look to you, Jesus. Look to you, Jesus. face is wonderful, Lord. Your face is glorious, God. Your face is worthy, Jesus. Let it happen, God. Let it happen. Friends, thank you so much for being with us here today. It's so lovely being together, so lovely having you. If you'd like to be prayed for afterwards in any way, I'm going to ask some of the elders and some of the leaders just to be available in the front here. But it would be our privilege to pray with you. Otherwise, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And uh, remember the prayer meeting. And some of us will see you here next Sunday. Bless you guys. Eh? Thank you so much.